Boom Platoon, popcorn shirt only means one thing. Short interest is popping. 3% up today, which means I think this is an all-time high. We've been following this stock for more than a couple of months now, almost coming up to an anniversary. Today, both of these stocks, AMC and Jimmy, trended sideways, but you guys want to stay tuned for the buy signal on AMC on the five-minute chart from Lux Algo, and I'll tell you exactly what is going on with the naked truth of naked shorting with Dr. Suzanne Trimbach. She's here again. We have seen her on this show. We reported on her multiple times. You can and check out this playlist in the description as well as on the channel. But if you guys wouldn't be so kind, let's stick to the end of the video and check out the short interest, which I'm going to reveal to you right away. The only thing you guys got to do is press that like so that we can get the number of people watching equal to the number of likes. Let's try and defeat that algorithm. 21.18%. Explode your brain right now. We are nearly going to break 110 million short on that 500 and change free float. That means that AMC is looking like it is positioned for a short squeeze once again if this keeps on growing and growing. We haven't seen this in a while, which is likely why we are now seeing the buy signal. This, of course, is Lux Algo. This gives us buy and sell signals in the past. For example, if you caught this strong sell signal here, you would have been able to get out at 36. 79 if of course you're a paper hander you on uh back in at around 35 bucks and then you would have reached that high you see these reversal bands right here that tells us that likely you're gonna face a reversal right at the tip top the fourth band of these bollingers and you would have gotten a little hint on the red oscillator down here this little red dot shows pretty much where the gains have been uh, exhausted for the day and that is the best part about this is that you can zoom out and see on different chart lengths and of course you still get that 20 percent off with the code andrew mo money at discount so Make sure that you understand that Ortex is now describing short interest as a 3% increase. This is scraped from the internet, about 80% of the market. So therefore, you guys are looking at an approximation, but this is the first time that Ortex has been showing this much short interest. Let's talk about the naked shorting because Ortex can only cover what is uh, uh, what is reported, right? Shorts have a a strategic advantage in terms of existing because they don't have to be entirely disclosed, especially for the naked shorts, the counterfeit shorts. So a cursory trip through WSB and other retail investing social media boards will yield multiple references to FTD, failure to deliver, and naked shorting. And most of those comments link to the widely held theory that short selling chicanery by hedge funds and other institutional traders is the major reason why GameStop and AMC and others remain so volatile. So what do these things actually mean and what effect do they actually have on the market, especially meme stocks? So Suzanne Trimbath comes in again and talks about it. I just want to play a short little Thank clip you, to make sure you guys understand that Suzanne Trimbath, the doctor herself, is still here talking about naked shorting so that we can get all of the, uh, the news out do not have access to and do not plan to borrow for settlement. So that's an intentional fail to deliver. Every naked short sell results in a fail to deliver, but not every fail to deliver started out as a naked short sell. So what is a failure to deliver? How does that work and how do you see it? A failure to deliver occurs at the end of the day. So trading ends and then an hour or so later, the National Securities Clearing Corporation provides for every participant there what their end of day balance is for shares out and money in. So a failure to deliver occurs when an NSCC member has shares due to the clearinghouse, but doesn't provide them. They fail to deliver the securities in time for settlement. There it is. So why would someone fail to deliver on a stock trade? The tendency is to try to, to blame it on paperwork, mistakes, errors, but there was actually a paper published by a researcher at the Securities and Exchange Commission who looked at it as a, as a trading strategy. In the post-trade processing world, there's something called a logical fail. If the price of the share is falling, then it's logical to not deliver it on the due date because you can buy it cheaper later and cover the fail. So you, you, get, you incur some bad will, 
Uh, more recently, the clearinghouse will charge you a fine for failing to deliver securities, but that's logical to do that, right? You can see from an investment standpoint, a cash flow standpoint, but there's also an illogical fail. And an <laughs> illogical fail to deliver is that you failed to deliver the shares today as the price is rising. That means that if you don't bring them in today, it's more expensive tomorrow and the next day and the next day to get those actual shares and close out your trades and settlement. And that's the most important part is that it's getting to be a deeper and deeper hole that the shorts are digging themselves into. The more that they increase this number like they did a ton today means that once this number gets to critical mass, the shorts all have to recursively cover because they've been recursively shorted. It's like borrowing from each every family member one thing, one you know, one ball or one frisbee. It's only one thing that exists. Let's say you're borrowing a car. You borrow it from an aunt and then you borrow, take that and give it to your sister. Borrow it from your sister and then give it to your dad. Keep borrowing it until everyone in the family thinks that they own the same car. That's not the case. This is the better version of what Suzanne Trimbath is talking about because that is still perfectly legal shorting. That is how it works on the markets. Now, that said, we are going through a lot of simplicity. We're trying to level the playing field so that you guys understand it from a conceptual uh, level. But at the same time, understand that that naked short is like a car that exists in the garage, but I'm lying. There is no car in a garage, but everyone in the family still thinks that they own it. So let's quickly finish off what she has to say about naked shorting. About 90 seconds left. So in a short squeeze situation, what effect would a naked short have on a stock, especially in a super volatile situation like we have with meme stocks? So a short squeeze would be when there were more people wanted to buy the stock than there were people who wanted to sell the stock, right? So that mm -hmm. that would push the price up. And if that pushes the price up, the idea is that, again, a logical fail would be covered as the price rises because you don't want that risk hanging over your head. But I can tell you from experience that there comes a point where there just are no shares out there. And no matter how many people want to buy it, the these market makers can just keep taking the, the buyer's money all day long and not deliver anything, right? which has this inefficient impact on price. Unless you're a very deep pocket market maker, there's a limit to how much, how many fails to deliver, how many naked shorts you can leave open for extended periods of time before you need to put up additional cash deposits, right? Clearinghouse deposits uh, in order to cover that. So that's that. Understand that there is going to be more and more of an avalanche coming in as that short interest rises, but that's just from the calculatable section. Now that you understand naked shorting as well as recursive shorting or the shorting that is going on throughout the entire market, not just for these stocks in particular, hopefully you are ready to invest and start investing in yourself financial freedom. My name has been Andrew. You can go and follow to Dr. Suzanne Trimbath. She's an absolute ape on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I have more Professor Meatball, more shenanigans that you should probably listen to and watch. So I'm on Andrew Mo Money on any social media platform. Hopefully you guys will take a follow and trip to that social media. But most importantly, I want to say thank you to those of you who make this show possible. The Moon Platoon, the Grillionaire, and Meatball the Space Legend Tears. Without you, this show would just be Pretty dull. So thanks so much for supporting the show. You can also do it by pressing the join button next to the description, uh, next to the subscribe button, which all of you have already pressed, if this video was of interest or excitement to you. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.